Hey there Code Grid crew, today, we're going to dive into a cool tutorial on how to build this standout hover animation, the kind you often spot on those slick awards websites. We'll be using the trusty trio of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and the potent Greensock to bring our animation to life. If you find this video helpful, go ahead and hit that like button, and make sure you're subscribed to stay in the loop with all my future content. Alright, let's cut the chatter and get down to business, let's start building. Let's kick things off by introducing a div called Preview which will serve as the stage for our project image. This will contain another div named Preview Image, the canvas where the image will be displayed as a background. Let's move on to building a container, a home for all our projects. Each project will be displayed in individual rows, consisting of information such as the client, location, service, and the year of the project. For our first row, rather than filling it with project data, we'll set up the column headers. These titles will be inserted within a P tag. This project item will be distinguished with an ID named header. To fill up our project container, let's replicate this item five times, ensuring each duplicate is updated with a unique ID reflecting its project index. To spruce things up, I'll replace the duplicate content with actual project data. And there we have it, our project structure. With that done, it's time to plunge into the world of CSS. Let's get styling. Let's kick off our CSS journey by grabbing every single element. We'll set their margins and padding to zero, and assign the box sizing property to border box. Next, we're setting the body's width to full screen and height to full viewport height. Our choice of font is the minimalist new Montreal. To position our container perfectly in the center, we're applying flexbox and setting both justify content and align items to center. We'll also add a touch of style by setting a soothing background color and contrasting text color. Now, let's focus on our preview section. We're giving it an absolute position and fixing its width and height to 250 pixels to prevent any overflow of content. We're setting the overflow to hidden. We're also disabling any pointer events on this section, setting its transformation origin to center and initializing its scale to zero. Finally, we're using a z-index of 2 to ensure it stays above other elements on the page. Moving on to preview image, we're setting its width and height to fully occupy the parent preview section. We're adding a background image using the URL function and ensuring it's covering the entire section by setting background size to cover. We're positioning the background image at the top left corner by setting background position to 0, 0. Lastly, we're disabling pointer events on this section as well, ensuring the hover effect isn't triggered unintentionally. Now let's give some style to our paragraphs. We're setting the font size to 14 pixels and converting all text to uppercase with text transform. We're also setting the line height to 100% to maintain a compact, clear line spacing. For the paragraphs within our header ID, we're dialing down the opacity to 0.5, giving it a subtle, subdued appearance to differentiate it from the rest of the content. Let's march onto our container. We're filling the entire available space by setting both its width and height to 100%. Then, with a sprinkle of flexbox magic and by setting both justify content and align items to center, we're achieving a perfectly centered layout. In our projects section, we're restricting the width to 70% to create a neat focused area for our content. We're applying Flexbox again but this time. With a twist, Flex Direction is set to Column, stacking our projects vertically. For each project, we're stretching it to fill the full width of the project's section. A padding of 2.5M top and bottom. 1M left and right is added for a balanced, pleasing spacing. Once again, we're using Flexbox to center align our content. A thin border is added at the bottom of each project using border bottom. This provides a clear distinction between individual projects. Lastly, we're changing the cursor to a pointer when it hovers over a project to indicate interactivity. Now, let's focus on the div elements inside each project. We're setting their flex value to 3, allowing them to take up triple the space of other elements within the flex container. However, for the last child div in each project, we're setting the flex value to 1, making it take up a third of the space compared to the other divs in the project. Lastly, we're including a media query to adapt our layout for smaller screens, specifically those with a maximum width of 900px. For these devices, we're opting to hide the location and service elements by setting their display property to none. This ensures our design remains clean and legible, even on narrower screens.
turning to JavaScript, we're starting by creating constants to hold our projects, preview, and preview image elements, using the query selector method to grab these from our HTML. We're also setting up a boolean variable is inside, initialized to false. This will help us track whether our mouse is currently hovering over a project. Finally, we're defining an object BG positions, each property of which corresponds to a project and holds a string representing the background position. This will allow us to shift our background image as we move between different projects. Next, we're defining a function move stuff that takes an event as its parameter. This function will manage the scaling of our preview based on whether the mouse is inside the project container. First, we're calling a function as mouse inside container with the event as a parameter to check whether the mouse is currently inside the project container. The result is stored in the mouse inside variable. We then check whether the current mouse position differs from the last recorded position is inside. If it does, we update is inside with the new position. Next, if the mouse is inside the project container, we use Greensock to scale up the preview to its original size over a duration of 0.3 seconds. If the mouse isn't inside the project container, we use GSAP to scale down the preview to zero, effectively hiding it, again over 0.3 seconds. Now, let's delve into the move project function. This function uses the event to adjust the position of our preview. First, we get the bounding rectangle of the preview using the getBoundingClientRect method. We then calculate the offset values for X and Y by dividing the width and height of the preview by 2. We then adjust the position of the preview by setting its left and top styles equal to the current X and Y positions of the mouse, subtracting the respective offsets. This places the center of our preview at the current mouse position. Next, we have the move project image function which accepts a project parameter. We're grabbing the ID of the project and then using GSAP to animate the background position of preview image over 0.4 seconds. We're setting the background position to the corresponding property in BG positions or defaulting to 00 if the ID doesn't exist in BG positions. This creates a smooth, visually engaging transition as we move between projects. The function is mouse inside container accepts an event as a parameter. It fetches the rectangle surrounding our projects using get bounding client rect. The function then checks whether the current mouse position falls within the boundaries of this rectangle. If it does, the function returns true, indicating the mouse is within the project container. We then attach a mouse move event listener to the window, which triggers our move stuff function whenever the mouse moves. Next, we're converting the children of projects into an array and looping over each project. For each project, we attach two mouse move event listeners. The first triggers the move project function, adjusting the position of the preview. The second triggers the move project imp function, shifting the background position of preview image. The project is bound as the first argument to move project image, ensuring it's passed as a parameter when the function is called. This setup provides us with a dynamic, interactive hover effect for each project. And that brings us to the end folks. I hope you found this video insightful. If you're keen to dive into the source code directly, simply follow the link in the description. Consider joining our pro membership for just the cost of a latte. You'll gain exclusive access not only to this source code but also to complete responsive website templates every month, all designed with the flair of our acclaimed websites. I look forward to seeing you in our next video.